Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Parkside Cab and Rentals. The holidays are supposed to be peaceful and relaxing. They seldom are. They're filled with crowds and visitors and stress, etc. Uh, but you know what is relaxing? Well, to stay at your own home away from home in the Smokies. Check out ParksideCabinRentals.com to book the place of your dreams this winter. You find the blueprint, you find the layout that you like right there on their website. They got dozens and dozens and dozens to choose from. Book it for a weekend, book it for a weekday. ParksideCabinRentals.com. All right, let's take a look at the 2023 schedule for your Tennessee Volunteers. There you go. They open with Virginia in Nashville. It was supposed to be at BYU. Instead, they brought it closer to home, so they opened with Virginia. That will be Virginia's first game since the shooting. Uh, they canceled their last two games of the year, so that will be an interesting mm -hmm. uh, cloud that kind of hangs over that game. Then they have the FCS opponent in Austin P. At Florida, who you beat by five this year, and you see they finished six and seven. They lost their bowl game with 40 guys transferring. <laughs> Texas San Antonio, hey, 11 and three, but they played three ranked teams this year, and that's who they lost to, so I wouldn't be quaking my shoes over UTSA. South Carolina, I think the crowd will be amped up for that one. That's suddenly become an interesting matchup these last two years. Then you get an open date. Then you get Texas A&M, and you'd have to figure they'll bounce back next year, but we'll see. At Alabama, who will be waiting on you. At Kentucky, who you basically take care of, unless Jeremy Pruitt's the coach or Derek Dooley. UConn, they're terrible. At Missouri, Georgia, and then Vanderbilt, Georgia, next to the last game of the year. Right. That's going to be fun. I like, I like the big games late. So, gentlemen. Chuck, I'll start with you. You're a super fan. <laughs> what are the fan expectations for next year? What's the range? What's acceptable? Well, I'll tell you what, you, you wonder if you bumped your head on the ceiling a little bit, don't you? I mean, I think the expectations are to, to uh, it's further on down the schedule, compete with Georgia, to win the division. To, that was kind of the missing piece to the puzzle to me was uh, things unraveled at South Carolina. But Georgia was the game when you get to be ranked number one, and then you weren't really ready for that stage, it didn't look like. I'm looking at this saying, can you be undefeated, you know, after the September part, going into the next part of your schedule? I would think the fans want to see Tennessee c compete for a division title that next to last game. Let that be the most meaningful game you've played at home in a long, long time. Well, that's reasonable. I'll be darned. <laughs> Chuck Cavalier's with reasonable, you know, to be still in contention the next to last game yes. you go to Georgia. I think that's a – Fair expectation. Do you think that's what – and we're talking here the majority. Now, there's a fringe factor right. that's going to expect, right. oh, we better win the national title. Uh, but the majority of fans, do you think that's the expectation? Do you think it's higher? Do you think it's lower? I, I think the majority as we go through the offseason will be George is the favorite in the East, understandably, but Tennessee is the top contender without any question. So the Florida game rival will be viewed as a, a tough one, but fans will say, why shouldn't we go no. win that game? Uh, Texas A&M is not going to scare any Tennessee fan. Bama might a little bit. And then Georgia's later on, and you're hoping, well, if we can only lose to Bama, we can play Georgia to win the East. I think that's what most fans will say. And that's exactly where I was going to go with it. Get to Georgia with a chance to win the East. I think that a reasonable expectation, it's an expectation. Right. I'm not going to go reasonable just yet, oh, okay. considering. But I think that it's I more reasonable think, than 15 yeah, and 0. Yeah, but I think that will be the expectations is to get to Georgia with a chance to end up in Atlanta. Uh, I, and I think it's always important to say, you know, some people put goals and expectations are the same thing. They're not. No, no. Goals is win the national championship. Yeah. Expectation is more of a realistic take. Uh, quick fact in terms of Tennessee winning. Ten, 10 or more games, double-digit wins in back-to-back -back seasons. It has not happened often. The last time was 2003-2004 when Tennessee went 10-3 and three both of those years, our first two years on the air. Uh, they did it four straight years in the incredible run that I don't know that you'll ever beat, 95-98 to 98, when Phillip Fulmer had them 45-5. and five. Um, Bill Battle did it in 70, 71, and 72, had three straight years. Then you got to go all the way back to Neyland in 50 and 51 and Neyland in 38, 39, and 40. So the idea <laughs> wow. that Tennessee is just going to cruise back out there and win double digits again, you're talking four coaches over 130 years of football. Yeah. It's, you know, typically teams, you get some breaks one year, the breaks go yeah. against you the next year. When we come back, let's bring Justin Hamilton. Let's get a coach's take on this same thing. I want to talk about more realistic goals. And is it possible, I'll give you an example, we're just going to break. 
Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss. They win 10 games. They go to the Sugar Bowl. They have to change their starting quarterback, and this year they're 8-5. and five. Is that kind of a regression as you build a program possible, acceptable? We'll discuss that next. Come on back on the Sports Source.